You never wake up one morning thinking that today is my last day. I was going through a difficult time because of the pain I was dealing with, the sadness, the isolation. I began to self-medicate with drugs. Before this point, I never even smoked a cigarette. I was hurting so much, I wanted the pain to stop, even if it was just temporary. So I see him coming up and I, I can see the look on his face that he didn't have good news for me. He said, besides you not having your driver's license, did you know that your license was also suspended? And I had no idea. I need you to pull your vehicle over and get out. And it was when he said that, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, that I just took off. Then I started hearing dogs barking in the, in the woods, and I started hearing a helicopter fly over me. I took my gun, I pointed it to my head, pointed it here, and I pulled the trigger, and the gun jammed. But at that time, I could hear the officers getting even closer and the dogs getting even closer, so I panicked even more. I rechambered the gun, I pointed it again at my head, but I did it quickly, and I shot myself in the head. And the, the bullet entered here and exited here. I had to come to grips with, in terms of, gosh, I'm still dealing with this depression. I'm still dealing with this anxiety. But now I have a lot of other things I'm going to have to deal with. I am now a person with a disability. I'm blind. And about that day two after waking up, I was just determined that I wasn't going to let this stop me. But that was a long process. That wasn't a snap of a finger. It required me to get the mental health that I needed. I had to do intensive outpatient. I had to do individual counseling. You know, I had to get on some medications, not to numb me, not to be that magic pill, but to help me to cope so that I could do the work, do the hard work. I was able to share my story with others, hear other people's stories in the group sessions that I was in. And when I told my story, there were a few times when I would have someone come up to me, and I remember this one gentleman in the 60s came up to me. He said, I have almost followed through with attempting suicide three times but each time I've talked myself out of it in the last second. He said, after your story, I just have a totally new outlook on life. One of the, the things I was looking for as I began my career as a counselor is, where can I go, where can I contribute that reflects the same beliefs and values that I have. And I was introduced to the Refuge Center when I was at Peabody. And one of the things that stood out to me was that with the Refuge Center offers a sliding scale, not allowing financial burdens or what a person doesn't have to keep them from getting the services that they need, this life-saving work and that drives me, that drives me because I know that there is hope, that I can contribute to society, that I can help others, that I can help people to see that there is hope, that there are resources out there, that whatever they're dealing with is, is not the end, but just a part of their current experience, that there's another chapter. God still has me here because He loves me, because He cares, and I think that my second chance in life, that purpose in the second chance is to make a difference. <laughs>